The hip bone is a large irregular bone. It is made up of three parts. These are the ilium superiorly, the pubis antero inferiorly, and the ischium postero inferiorly. The three parts are joined to each other at a cup shaped hollow called the acetabulum. The pubis and ischium are separated by a large oval opening called the operator foramen. The acetabulum articulates with the head of the femur to form the hip joint. The pubic parts of the two hip bones meet anteriorly to form the pubic symphysis. The two hip bones form the pelvic or the hip girdle. The bony pelvis is formed by two hip bones along with the sacrum and coccyx. Now the side determination, the acetabulum is directed laterally. The flat expanded ilium forms the upper part of the bone that lies above the acetabulum. The obturator foramen lies below the acetabulum. It is bounded anteriorly by thin pubis and posteriorly by thick and strong ischium. So the given bone here belongs to the left side. The anatomical position of the hip bone. The symphysial surface of the body of pubis lies in the median plane. The pubic tubercle and the anterior superior iliac spine lies in the same coronal plane. Now the book here, it represents the coronal plane. The pelvic surface of the body of pubis is directed backwards and upwards. Now we will see the parts of the hip bone beginning with the ilium. Ilium forms the upper fan shaped expanded part of the hip bone. It has two ends, the upper end which is expanded and the lower end which is constricted. It has three borders, anterior, posterior and the medial border. It has two surfaces, lateral surface and the medial surface. We will see the ends of the ilium now. The upper end, it is also called as the iliac crest. It is convex upwards in the vertical plane. In horizontal plane, it is concave inwards anteriorly and convex inwards posteriorly. The highest point of the iliac crest is at the level of interval between third and fourth lumbar spines. Anterior superior iliac spine is the anterior end of the iliac crest. It receives the attachments of lateral end of inguinal ligament and the sartorius which also arises from the upper half of the notch below it. Posterior superior iliac spine is the posterior end of the iliac crest. A dimple 4 cm lateral to the second sacral spine marks the posterior superior iliac spine on the body. Morphologically, the iliac crest is divided into ventral segment or the anterior two-third and a dorsal segment or the posterior one-third. The ventral segment is again divided into the inner lip, the outer lip and the area between these two lips is the intermediate area. The outer lip shows the tubercle of iliac crest. It is situated 5 cm behind the anterior superior iliac spine. 
Facial lata is attached to its entire extent. Tensor facial lata originates in front of the tubercle of the iliac crest. External oblique muscle is inserted on its anterior two-third and the latissimus dorsi originates just behind the la highest point. The intermediate area gives attachment to the internal oblique muscle in its whole extent. The inner lip in its anterior two-third provides attachment to transversus abdominis, fascia transversalis and fascia iliaca. Its posterior one-third provides attachment to quadratus lumborum and thoracolumbar fascia. The dorsal segment, now it is divided into medial inner or the lateral outer slopes. The lateral outer slopes give origin to the gluteus maximum muscle and the medial slopes give origin to the erector spinae muscle. The lower end of the ilium reaches the acetabulum and forms its upper two-fifth. Now we will see the borders of the ilium. Anterior border, it extends from the anterior superior iliac spine to the acetabulum. Its upper half is concave forming a notch. Sartorius originates from its upper half. Its lower half is concave, convex and called as the anterior inferior iliac spine. Straight head of rectus femoris originates from the upper half of this spine. Iliofemoral ligament is attached to the lower half of anterior inferior iliac spine. Posterior border, it extends from the posterior superior iliac spine to the upper end of the posterior border of ischium. Its lower part contributes to the greater sciatic notch. Some fibers of pyriformis originates from upper margin of the greater sciatic notch, while major part of the pyriformis muscle arises from the sacrum. The junction of say greater sciatic notch and upper part of the posterior border is marked by posterior inferior iliac spine. Posterior border between the post two posterior iliac spines receives the attachment of sacrotuberous ligament. Now the medial border, it extends from the iliac crest to the iliopubic eminence on the inner surface of the ilium. This border intervenes between iliac fossa and sacropelvic surface of the ilium. Lower part of the medial border forms the arcuate line which is also called as the linea terminalis. Now surfaces of the ilium, the lateral surface or the gluteal surface, it is divided into four areas by three gluteal lines. The posterior gluteal line, it is the shortest among the three lines. It begins 5 cm in front of the posterior superior spine and ends just in front of the posterior inferior spine. The anterior gluteal line, it is the longest among the three lines. It begins about 2.5 cm behind the anterior superior spine, runs backwards and then downwards to end at the middle of the upper border of the greater sciatic notch. The inferior gluteal line, it is most ill-defined. It begins a little above and behind the anterior inferior spine, runs backwards and downwards to end near the apex of the greater sciatic notch. Now we will mark the lines on the bone. The posterior gluteal line, the anterior gluteal line, which is the longest, it 
and the ill-defined inferior gluteal line. The gluteus maximus muscle arises from the area behind the posterior gluteal line. Gluteus medius muscle arises from the area between anterior and posterior gluteal lines. Gluteus minimus muscle arises from the area between anterior and inferior gluteal lines. The reflected head of rectus femoris arises from the groove just above the acetabulum. The capsule of the hip joint is attached near the acetabular margin. Now we will see the medial surface. It is divided as said earlier into iliac fossa and sacropelvic surface by the medial border. The iliac fossa it is situated on the inner aspect of the ilium in front of the medial border. It is concave in shape. Iliacus muscle arises from its upper two third. The sacropelvic surface. It is situated behind the medial border on the inner side of the ilium. It has three parts. Iliac tuberosity. It is a rough area just below the dorsal segment of the iliac crest. Interosseous sacroiliac ligament is attached to the greater part of iliac tuberosity. Dorsal sacroiliac ligament and iliolumbar ligament are also attached to iliac tuberosity. The auricular surface. It is situated antero inferior to the iliac tuberosity. It is pitted in appearance and it is articular. Sacroiliac joint is formed by the articulation of sacrum with the auricular surface. The pelvic surface. It is situated antero inferior to the auricular surface. Major part of this surface provides attachment to obturator internus. Preauricular sulcus is seen on the surface along the upper border of the greater sciatic notch. It is deeper in females compared to that in males. It is due to the ventral sacroiliac ligaments.